Hey y'all, this is BG Codes and I am Brad Garapy. In this devlog, I wanted to cover my migration from Gatsby over to Next.js for my personal website. Let me show you what it looks like. This is the site and it is essentially exactly the same, but under the hood, I made a very large transition over to Next.js from Gatsby. Now, all of this is open source and I'll link the repository and the pull request in the description below. But as you can see, it's pretty big. It's almost a 55,000 lines of code difference here. And that's a reduction. Although I still added 24,000 lines. This was a huge rewrite. So let me show you VS code and show you around the code a little bit. Over here on the left, you'll see my folder structure. It is mostly the same as Gatsby. One of the first things that changed and one of the biggest things that took me some getting used to was my content inside of posts is now completely flat. I used to nest uh, a post along with its images in here, but now I separated the images out all into public. And that's kind of like your static file hosting directory. Uh, because I thought this wasn't possible to do in Next, but it turns out it is. I'll just get that in in another PR later on. Otherwise, I've got content for content, public for kind of static files, and then source for all of my components, React context, React hooks, uh, pages, styles, things like that. So the primary difference between Gatsby and Next.js is that instead of using plugins, to source your data in Gatsby and querying them through GraphQL, Next.js gives you regular old fetch access and file system access to source your data. And this was definitely a breath of fresh air. So what I'm showing you right here is my posts file. And, and this is going to source all the data that I need to display blog posts. And it's as simple as doing things like read directory and map and reduce over those files and read their front matter and then send it back. And so I have data retrievers for like, get all the posts, get some of the posts, get the latest posts, get a post by slug that are all used on different pages. Or if the data is not local, you can hit an API to source this data. So I have a get podcast method and that just uses the Captivate SDK to grab the information about the Web Dev Weekly podcast. And same thing with GitHub. I pull my pinned projects from GitHub. This just uses GitHub's GraphQL API through their OctoKit library. And then I map over the return and send it back to Next.js. And that's what gets passed into my page components. I think it's a much simpler way to handle this than Gatsby does where then it gets injected into a GraphQL data layer, and then you have to query GraphQL in your application. It's, it's a little more convoluted because what would happen is on every page, you'd have a very large GraphQL query to define the data that you need, which I ultimately extracted those into the hooks directory. So for every page, for every piece of data I needed, I would have a corresponding React hook. This directory now is much more stripped down and only has hooks that I actually need to use around the site, not just to curry data everywhere. Now, the next thing that's different between Gatsby and Next.js is markdown parsing. Gatsby used to provide me plugins for this, but not so much in Next.js. The training wheels have come off and you're allowed to do whatever you want. So, one of the tough things was understanding how to transform a markdown string that was read from the file system into the HTML that I actually wanted to be displayed on the page. And there's a lot more than meets the eye to a blog post. You need to have headers that are linkable. You need to have uh, dynamic images and optimized images. You need to have syntax highlighting on your code and you need to have embedders for things like YouTube and Twitter and Twitch. And so all of that I had to write myself or, you know, at least not rely on a plugin for. So this markdown chain took me a very long time to figure out, but it starts with remark, which turns an HTML string into a markdown syntax tree. 
and then I transform it in a couple different ways with GitHub flavored markdown, some stuff about images, embedding things, and then syntax highlighting. And then eventually I use a plugin or a library called Rehype, which this will take the markdown syntax tree and turn it into an HTML syntax tree. And now you can do transformations on the HTML itself. And at the very end, you stringify the HTML and pass it in as props to your component, which then you can use dangerously set HTML on. I also actually had a second layer here. This markdown stuff all happens on the server, but I still needed some transformations on the client. So I used a React hook to make some final transformations to that HTML. And essentially what this does is it allows you to inject React components for specific tags. For instance, in Next.js, I want to use the next image component. So for every plain old HTML image tag I find, I'm injecting a Next.js image component with the width and the height so that I can properly optimize the image and blur it up for all those use cases. This is all stuff that I plan on extracting and creating libraries for myself and for others to use. Now, also in this rewrite, I cleaned up my CSS. I had a lot of global styles to transform things like my embeds to make them look good. But I was able to strip all that out, put it into CSS modules. And now my global style sheet is my CSS variable definitions and very, very basic HTML styles. Your body, your headers, your paragraph tags, your links, things like that. Another thing I really liked about CSS module support in Next.js is their import syntax. You used to have to, in Gatsby, import star as your styles. But in this case, in Next.js, you can just import the object directly and then access its properties. Another reason why I enjoy working in Next.js is because I've created some of my own components. Uh, things like I'm losing my place here. Things like uh, an SEO component or a link component that just kind of abstract away the difficulties of Next.js. And so I felt very at home when using my own components. Next.js, I thought, also had better TypeScript support out of the box. This is my Twitch API route, my serverless function. It gets the status of my Twitch channel, am I live, true or false? And I was able to turn this into TypeScript without changing the build process of the serverless functions or anything like that. Next.js and Vercel knew just what to do with them. And speaking of TypeScript, I also really improved the types on the site. These are all my mock data for tests. And all of my mock data is typed based on what the application would expect. So not only do I have type safe tests, but I know that I have type safe functions and things inside of my application. Speaking of tests, test setup got easier as well. This is the just config file. Uh, it's a little bit simpler because I don't have to write my own Babel config anymore. I can rely on the next JS Babel config to transform my TypeScript and JavaScript exactly like my application would have. In addition, in the just setup file, I used to have to mock out Gatsby and the router and Gatsby image and all these different things in regards to the framework. In Next.js, you're kind of freed from those chains. And while you might have to implement a little more things on your own, you don't have to fight the framework when it comes to testing. And finally, one of the things that was different, it used to be a plugin in Gatsby. I had to write myself in next is uh, Google Analytics. And as you can see, it's actually pretty simple. I moved over to Google Analytics 4, and all it takes is loading a script tag, the G tag script, and then initializing it with your measurement ID. And I've extracted this into a component. This is another one of those libraries that I plan on publishing to make it easier for myself and others to use in their next JS projects. Now, finally, this is all hosted on Vercel. 
and Vercel gave me some things for free that I really, really liked. First of all, I get free Web Vitals monitoring. I used to have to run these complicated, like wait for Netlify to deploy my Gatsby site and then run Lighthouse on it and get the scores. Whereas Vercel actually does Web Vitals monitoring from the user's perspective so that I can get like real from the user's browser measurements and I can see how my site is changing over time in regards to Web Vitals performance. Vercel also just happened to have faster build times, uh, specifically with Next.js. Uh, my builds in Gatsby went from like three and a half, four minutes over to Next.js, which is down to like a minute and 20 seconds. That's like two or three times faster, way, way better. And of course, it's hard to do an entire rewrite like this and not have some sort of error monitoring. So I went ahead and configured Sentry and it was easy as uh, pulling in Sentry's Next.js SDK in your next config and then wrapping your config with the with Sentry config wrapper. And that's it. Now front end errors uh, flow properly up to Sentry. And if we also want to check out the back end, like API routes and serverless functions, they also have a with Sentry wrapper that when you export your serverless function, you just wrap it around the handler that you defined. It's that easy. So overall, this process has been uh, not too bad. I would say the markdown parsing was the hardest part. But honestly, uh, Corbin Crutchley helped me so much. He goes by Crutchcorn online. I'm going to link his profile in the description because he was really pioneering this Gatsby to Next.js rewrite with all the bells and whistles that I wanted because he was working on unicorn utterances, and this is now powered by Next.js as well. So Corbin, major shout out. Thank you so much. At the end of the day, I've been really, really happy with the transition to Next.js. I plan on building more apps with Next.js in the future, and I don't really see a reason to pick up Gatsby anymore. Not to say that it's bad, I just think Next.js offers more flexibility. So thanks for sticking around. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.